As I'm sure you know, patients with primary adrenal failure need replacement with aldosterone and cortisol, but the problem is that these two natural hormones have too short a half-life for safe once daily oral administration. Now for aldosterone, we therefore use the analog fluorocortisone, and this fluorine atom vastly increases the half-life and enables once daily administration, and we tend to use 50 to 100 micrograms daily. It is known that there is an increased mortality associated with adrenal insufficiency, and this is due to excess steroid, and in particular, glucocorticoid exposure, because glucocorticoids are the cause of the increased BMI, and increased weight, and increased blood pressure, and increased glucose, and increased lipids that we see in patients who are on excessive steroid exposure. Now, because the half-life of hydrocortisone is also too short for once daily administration, we tend to use it twice or three times daily. And the problem is that these late peaks are associated with increased levels and seem to be harmful. And what we want really is a curve that looks a bit like this blue one down here with a gradual reduction over time. According to Nature Reviews Endocrinology, getting the profile right also improves the immune system. And as they say here, it's common knowledge that the regularly used twice or three times daily hydrocortisone is non-physiological. And so in the same way that we use fluidocortisone to replace aldosterone, we can use prednisolone, which has this double bond here, instead of cortisol. And this increases the half-life substantially so that again, you can use prednisolone once daily instead of cortisol three times daily. And when we did this and compared patients on prednisolone with those on hydrocortisone, we actually found no significant difference in outcome. But the key point that I'd like to draw your attention to is that the average dose that we're using for patients with adrenal failure is 3.7 milligrams once daily. So notice then that the commonly used five milligram dose is excessive. In this other study, where we also looked at patients who are on prednisolone replacement, we had an average dose here of 3.86 milligrams once daily. This was in 2016. So it's clear then that many of us are using too much steroid. And if we use a dose such as between three and four milligrams once daily, it looks like we'll be having exactly the right impact, but we need to prove this point, which is the subject of this research. So if you give a single dose in the morning, it's rapidly absorbed and the half-life is absolutely perfect for once daily administration. Now in the UK, we have one milligram tablet, which enables me to give between three and four milligrams as needed rather than five milligrams. It's very important that you don't use enteric coat of prednisolone, which slows the absorption and gives a very abnormal late peak. Now, if you've only got five milligram tablets, then one option, because five milligrams, remember, is excessive, is excessive, is to use 3.75 milligrams, that's three quarters of a tablet, once daily. Another study that confirms this is this patient, a study in patients with congenital adrenal hyperplasia. And even here, they say that daily hydrocortisone does not reproduce cortisol chronobiology, and they compared this with a single morning oral dose of prednisolone. And to cut to the chase, they say that a single morning dose of prednisolone appeared to achieve better clinical and hormonal control. But the really important point at the bottom here is the equivalence ratio is much higher than thought previously, that prednisolone is about six to eight times more potent than, we, than uh, hydrocortisone, and therefore three milligrams of prednisolone is equivalent to 20 of hydrocortisone. So this old textbook is incorrect that we're all reading. Five of pred is not the same as 20 of hydrocortisone, and it's not four times more potent. In fact, three milligrams of pred is equivalent to 20, and it's therefore seven times more potent than hydrocortisone. So we're on the hunt really to work out what the right replacement dose, and we've been doing this since 2014, and we're working out that we're using lower and lower doses. We have an assay for prednisolone locally, and using this, we've determined that in fact, two to four milligrams daily seems to be the correct dose for most people. So we are now undertaking a large trial to compare prednisolone with hydrocortisone or prednisolone three milligrams with prednisolone five milligrams. And if you want to join this, 
you can email us on steroids at imperialdata.uk or you can look at this website which has a short explanatory video and other details and if you scroll down you can find that there's links to proformers um, and also an online survey that you can do with your patients before and after the change.